Hi! This week we will do an experiment on reflection and refraction at the plane surface. This is the first week that we are starting to study optics in physics. The purpose of this experiment is to study the laws of reflection and refraction. These laws form a basis for optics. Their application to curved surfaces leads to equations for the object distance, image distance and the focal length for mirrors and lenses. Reflection is the abrupt change in the direction of the propagation of the wave that strikes the boundary between the two different media. At least some point of the incoming wave remains at, in the same medium. Assume the incoming light ray makes an angle theta i with the normal of a plane tangent to the boundary and the reflected ray makes an angle theta r with this normal and remains in the same plane as the incident ray uh, and the normal. The law of reflection states that theta i is equal to theta r. Specular reflection occurs at the smooth plane boundaries. Reflection at rough, irregular boundaries is diffuse reflection. The smooth surface of a mirror reflects light specularly, while a rough surface of the wall reflects light diffusely. The reflectivity and reflectance of a surface material is the fraction of the energy of the oncoming wave that is reflected by it. The reflectivity of a mirror, for example, is close to 1. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave due to a change in its speed. This change in speed is observed when wave passes from one medium to another at any angle other than 0 and 90 degrees. Refraction of light is the most observed phenomenon. Here at this figure, the theta i is the angle of incidence and the theta small r is the angle of refraction and then theta capital R is the angle of reflected wave. The index of refraction for any material is given by this equation n is equal c over v, where c is a constant and it is 3.0 times 10 to 8 meters per second and the v is the velocity of the light in that particular substance. The Snell's law is the equation that explains this phenomenon. This equation relates the incident wave and refracted wave to the index of refraction for these two materials. So in our case, sine theta i divided by sine theta r is going to be equal to the velocity of the light in medium 1 divided by the velocity of the light in medium 2 and that's equal to n2 over n1, where n2 is the index of refraction for the material 2 and n1 is the index of refraction for material 1. When the light travels from air to a different material, Snell's law reduces to this equation. Sine theta i divided by sine theta r is going to be equal to n, where n is the index of refraction for the medium to which the light travels from air. The total internal reflection happens when a ray of light strikes a medium boundary at an angle larger than particular critical an angle with respect to the normal of the surface. If the refractive index is lower on the other side of boundary, no light can pass through and all of the light is reflected. The critical angle is the angle above which the total internal reflection occurs. For this example here we have the incident ray coming from water to air at some angle theta 1. So the this ray of light will refract and the angle of refraction is theta 2. When we increase the angle of incidence to and then it will the refracted wave will go across the boundary between the two mediums, in this case water and air, 
and then for the angle theta 1 here that is larger than critical angle we are going to have the total internal reflection which means that this ray of light at this particular angle theta 1 will totally internally reflect from the boundary with this angle theta 2. The relationship between indices of refraction for these two media and the critical angle is given by this equation sine theta c is equal to n2 divided by n1. In our case here n2 is air so it is going to be equal to 1 so then sine theta c is equal to 1 over n1 where n1 is the index of refraction for this medium here in our case water. Now let's talk a little bit about the experimental setup for this week. So you're going to have on the optical bench you're going to have a light source, you're going to have a parallel ray lens, slit mask and slit plate and then you're going to have a this rotating scale here and on the center of this scale you're going to have a acrylic semicircle made out of lucite and the goal of this experiment is to by changing the incident ray angles measure the refracted and reflected ray and analyze your data using Snell's law in order to determine the index of refraction for this uh, acrylic semicircle. Now I will go ahead and show you how this experiment is done. Okay, so this is a experimental setup for this week's experiment on reflection and refraction. So you have a light source, you have here a cylindrical lens, on this component holder you have a slit plate that has seven of these slits and then you have slit mask. You have this rotational table here and then you have a viewing screen and then you have this uh, cylindrical semicircle. Uh, this experiment is done in dark so now I'm going to uh, turn off the lights. So the first part is you're going to turn the light source on and then you're going to arrange the position of the cylindrical lens and slit plate So you get, you can remove this viewing screen, you don't have to use it. And then you can also move the uh, the light source. You need to arrange this, move them either back or forth, up until you get seven of these rays to be uh, parallel one to another. The easiest way to do this is if you take the middle ray to go through zero degrees on this side here and zero degrees on this side here. Okay, so let's see. You can move the base back as well. Let's see if I'm able to do this. Okay, a little bit. Okay, so once you have these seven rays parallel, you're going to put the slit mask on and block everything but the middle ray that goes through a zero. Then you're going to place this uh, lucite semicircle on the middle. There are lines here, so you can use those lines to align so the this ray of light is coming through the center of this semicircle and then you can use this viewing screen 
here if you wish. If you set, there is, a, I don't know if you can see, there is this hole here. You can set that hole to show zero degrees. Okay? So now you're going to change the angle of incidence angle from 10 to 80 degrees in increments of 10 degrees by rotating this table here and then record the values for reflected and refracted weight. Okay? So if we rotate, we have incidence angle 10 degrees. I don't like using this viewing screen, so you don't have to use it. Then you're going to read this angle here. So this is your refra refracted way. Read the angle indicator that is on the middle of this ray of light, okay? So for 10 degrees here, I'm reading approximately 7.588 degrees for a refracted way and then for reflected way here is kind of hard to see it in the beginning it's around 12 degrees and then you go as you increase the incident angle this reflected is going to become more and more visible so record these values to your table for every 10 degrees from 10 to 80. Once you're done with this part of the experiment, to observe the total internal reflection, you're going to turn this table. So the light now is coming to this uh, blue uh, side semicircle from the curved side. So you're going to start rotating. You see a refracted and reflected angle. You're going to rotate, rotate, rotate up until this ray of light here completely disappears. At that moment, that's the critical angle, the total internal reflection occurs. Okay. Here we go. That's it. Okay. Notice one thing. We observe some colors. I don't know if you can see this on this video, but you're going to observe some colors before the critical angle. Okay? So the last part of the experiment is going to be similar. You're just going to remove this slit plate and then you're going to observe when you send the light through the curved surface of this side semicircle, you're going to see that all of them, after refracting, they are coming to the same point. So the purpose of this experiment is to use the Snell's law to calculate the index of refraction for this uh, lucite material here. The standard value is 1.5. Once you're done, turn off the light source and return everything into the same order you found it when you walked into the lab. This is all for this week. Thank you.